Hey, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Um, listen, how am I even talking to you right now? When you make a phone call, have you ever even considered how it works? No? Have you left autoplay on and found yourself down a weird rabbit hole? Possibly, you know. But seeing as you're here, let's do a science lesson. Before we get into the super high tech science of how our mobile phone works, let's go to the basics and explain how this works. I always thought that this only worked in cartoons, but it actually does work. Can you hear me? Testing one, two. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Hopefully you heard that, but I promise you it works. But how does it work? When you talk normally, say in a room sat opposite someone, you are making invisible sound waves go across the air to the other person. These sound waves vibrate air molecules, making them go back and forth. This vibrating works with the cup and string too. The sound waves vibrate the bottom of the cup you're speaking into, vibrating it back and forth extremely quickly, more than 1,000 times per second. Those vibrations travel up the tight string, vibrating back and forth too, and repeating the same movement of the vibrations on the bottom of the cup to recreate the noise that got vibrated in the first place. Vibrations! A certain man called Alexander Graham Bell discovered how to use these sound waves to make the telephone or at least the simplest version of it, in 1876. Here's the patent diagram for it, and I'll explain how it works. When you speak into the Kona A, the sound waves vibrate a membrane. This membrane vibrates a magnet and needle that gets dunked into electrified acid water. So if you're thinking of doing this experiment at home, don't. With a capital DON'T. These vibrations and needle dunkings change the flow of electricity from the power source and makes a wave pattern matching the sound being spoken into the cone. The electricity from this then gets transferred to the other end where it all gets reversed. The pulses of electricity make a magnet on the other side more and less powerful, which vibrates a little membrane making it go up and down. Those movements cause the air to move in a wave pattern which is more or less identical to the original sound. It was a technological marvel at the time. But it sounded exactly like I described, like a voice had been transferred using electricity, magnets, and acid. <laughs> that was Alexander himself. Pretty creepy, right? Want to know something even creepier? Fun fact time! Did you know Alexander Graham Bell was working on quite a lot of projects at the time? The harmonic telegraph, the telephone, and hearing aids for the deaf. He also built a device called a phonoautograph, which was a way of recording sound using those vibrations we were talking about. Cool. However, it was made with rather morbid ingenuity out of a dead man's ear. Everything uh, good at home, Alex? Speaking into this device would cause the ear's membrane to vibrate according to how loud or quiet the sounds were. These vibrations would cause a lever attached to the ear to write a wave pattern on smoked glass, bigger waves for louder sound, and smaller waves for quieter sounds. This is what inspired him to make the telephone. He thought that by using a membrane to convert sound waves, he could replicate speech over long distances. It took him two years to put the idea into practice, but he did it. So next time you're speaking to your friend on the phone, think about a stranger's cold, dead ear pressed up against you. Later in 1877, a Mr. Thomas Edison had the bright idea of not using acid to talk to people. <laughs> Smart thinking, Ed. Yeah. Instead, he patented a new transmitter, one that used carbon. Using carbon to help with the whole communication process meant that the distance and clarity of these calls could be improved upon exponentially and could be reached to all manner of places. But say you wanted to call someone other than old Graham Bell. What the world needed then was switchboards. Switchboards were devices used to connect circuits of telephones to make calls between users or other switchboards. Think of it as a dot to dot, joining all the lines from point to point till eventually you got to where the call needed to be. Switchboard operators, who were mainly women because they were much more skilled and reliable with this behemoth task, would manually have to insert and remove jack plugs in the right places to direct the calls. Fair bloody play. As time went on, however, the need for switchboards was obsolete. Technology became advanced and all you needed was the person's number to call someone and that lovely crystal clear-ish voice could be heard. But dialing that number actually has a lot more meaning than you thought. When dialing a number on both the old style rotary phones and the new ones, it isn't more the number that told your phone who to call, but more the sounds. When you dial a number, you are sending different sounds down your phone. These sounds. 
What your phone then picks up on is the musical sounds being made and directs your call to the musical number that you dialed in. How cool! And it is! All this talk of musical numbers, the wonders of sending your voice, and women absolutely bossing it on the switchboards, it's incredible how much work and history has gone behind these devices. But one question still remains. This was all with cables being used to transfer voices. So how the hell can we hear people's voices without the need for an electric acid needle dead ear inspired contraption? Quite simple really. It's like the cup and string, but more futuristic. Instead of vibrations, your voice gets turned into thousands upon thousands of electronic signals made of ones and zeros. A microchip in your phone, much like the string, modulates a radio wave using those signals and sends them to a nearby cell tower. The tower sends your voice to the person you're calling and the process is reversed, turning those ones and zeros into the sounds they were when spoken and letting you hear it. Simple. Well, not really difficult and sciencey. So. What have we learned today? That phones pack a mighty heap of technology. In fact, your smartphone is millions of times more powerful than the Apollo 11 guidance computers. No wonder phones cost so much. But the big phone store knocked the price down for you though, so uh, <clears throat> just saying. So next time you make a call, be grateful that you don't have potential electric acid water leaking down your hand. Or even have Alexander Graham Bell lurking over you, looking at your ear in interest. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you on the next one.